Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to this video. This is gonna be part one of a multi-part video series that I'm gonna be putting together. Um, the topics that I'm gonna be talking about in this series are housing, consumerism, and racism all around Panorama City, focusing mainly on the, the, the very first years of Panorama City as a city in the 40s, leading all the way up to the 80s and you know a little bit of the early 90s uh but yeah so this first video i'm gonna be talking about racism and racism actually plays a very big part in how panorama city was originally formed and and how it created its its original policies and stuff like that in fact at the very beginning of panorama city when it was being planned by fritz burns and henry kaiser there was this document. It was a covenants, conditions, and restrictions document. And in this document, it stated that no one of non-white blood can use any kind of land in Panorama City. And when I first read that, it was a bit shocking to know that a city that is so currently now rich in diversity was, was founded on such systematic racist uh, policies and 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 uh, and planning, right? But in retrospect, if you put it into context with the times that that you know it was, it was the '40s, the '40s in America, that was a racist time. You know, progressively, America has gotten less racist. Some may say, some may argue that, but nonetheless, it was definitely in context a far more racist time. So a bit less shocking when you put it that way. But it's still interesting to see how the legacy of these systematically racist policies are still living today in modern day Panorama City. You know, in fact, Panorama City was so racist that in the 60s, in 1966, the KKK paraded around Panorama City. That blew my mind. How does the KKK parade around I've lived in Panorama City 22 years and I cannot think of any time when I would think you know what this looks like this is like exactly the place that the KKK would parade around it was, it's insanity it's insanity but I mean, look at this picture this picture is is pretty it, it's out there man check it out they're just freely there it, it's kind of a it's kind of like this bizarre thing, but it, it was reality. It was reality then, and that reality influenced still the uh, how we live today in Panorama City in one way or another. You know, uh, Panorama City was the very first planned community in the valley. So it really is an interesting case study to see just how the dynamic in between the west side and the east side was created and how it was manifested and perpetuated by these developers and by racist policies and it, it was it was so bad like that was in the 40s right and it wasn't until the 60s when a little a little something something called the civil rights act came in in 60 what was that 66 was it or 68 in 68 when the civil rights act came in that's when those original conditions and covenants and restrictions of non uh, of people of non white blood not being able to own land it wasn't until then that those legally became unenforceable but then even at that even at that, it wasn't until the 1977 Community Reinvestment Act that people of color were actually able to come in and populate the area because what that did was basically give these subsidized loans by the, uh, the, F, uh, by the FH, by the Federal Housing Administration. administration. Um, they were able to like, uh, people of color were able to get these loans now and they were able to move in. And so Panorama City received a lot of uh, of different kind of people now, uh, other than like the the white people that were predom or dominantly uh, being uh, the people who live here. And so in the seventies, in the eighties, this is what I call Panorama's white flight era. You know, this is was when it really you know it started off slowly, but then it it was rapid white flight in the. Um, 
when when Latino and other people of of color started coming into Panorama City, it, it was in the in the eighties was was when the boom really happened and the demographic really began to shift. It was it pop. Uh, if, if you really think about it too, in the context of the where the country was, immigration was popping in the eighties. A lot of immigration coming into the country. So of course, Panorama City. You know, we're in Southern California. Our proximity to Mexico and to Latin America. You know, it was going to introduce a whole new demographic to us as well. So the '80s were an extremely transformative time for Panorama City. But at the same time, you got to understand when all these different kinds of people and demographics start coming into a city that's predominantly one demographic. There's going to be tensions, you know. So. This time period was an also a very racially tense time for Panorama City. And, you know, there was um, at, at the time there was this president, right, of the Homeowners Association. And I think this was in the 90s. He was asked uh, in a uh, L.A. Times article, I believe. And it was an L.A. Times article that was talking about how the proportions of Latino and other uh, people of color were doubling and even tripling in some in some uh, circumstances, while the the proportion of white people was was cutting by half. Was it was it was very very uh, dramatic uh, shift in demographic and a very quick one too. So this was the president of the housing of, of the homeowners association in the area at the time, uh, Donald Schultz in 1991. He says. He says, many of us are very unhappy with what's going on. And the vast majority of the people who have been here 10, 15 or 20 years would move out if they could. And he says, it's primarily the deteriorating quality of life. He says, overdevelopment, overcrowding, too many apartments and far too many undocumented illegal aliens. So... You know, he, he lists all these reasons as to why, you know, Panorama City is deteriorating. But then at the end, and he says, yes, he says, and far too many, far too many undocumented illegal aliens. So that was just like, you know, a little racial, a little racial uh, jab. But that really, you know, it goes to show what the attitude was when it came to uh, immigration, illegal immigration or whatever. You know, it was there was a lot of racial undertones as to um people's opinion on the the changing state of the city so that was in 91 and so in between the 40s when it was made with racial uh, with a uh, with racist uh, policies in the 60s when the KKK marched and then 68 when the Civil Rights Act happened, 77 with the uh, Community Reinvestment Act, and then in 92, the General Motors plant closed. And I mention this because it's important to understand that the General Motors plant at the time, now where the plant is, just up the street right here on Van Nuys, that was basically the last purveyor of middle-class jobs in the area so once that plant closed a lot of people uh that were basically still living in Panorama city just because they worked at the, at the plant left immediately because now they, they 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 were able to go get better paying jobs somewhere else because there was no more factory work there was no more high paying jobs here so i think that is basically where the white flight era finishes and we really start to develop the modern era and the modern demographic of Panorama City when uh, we have a lot of Latino, a lot of Pacific Islands there, uh, a growing population of black. So it's, 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 it's richly diverse now, but it's insane how, how through just uh, different kinds of policies, Panorama City went from a dominantly white neighborhood with very pro-white policies to a neighborhood with over half of the population born in another country. You know, this is, this is a, this, this, this switch over is something that is very interesting to me and something that I pay a lot of attention to because for some reason that we still are not able to 
reach our full potential. You know, we see the affluent side being the west side of the valley and Panorama City being on the east side of the valley. The east side of the valley, which a lot of people are still suffering in all different cities in the east side, Pacoima, San Fernando, Selmar, Sun Valley, Arlita, like the the east side, it seems almost as if we can't catch a break, you know? And, and, and I just have to think how much of that is the legacy of these racist policies that you know a lot of a lot of the, of the valley was founded on and and I, I i wonder what is you know what is the government to do to make this right is there a space for the government to make this right how is this made right what you know what kind of policies do we need to put in place to allow us to catch up, you know? How is it that that neighborhoods were thriving when they were white, but as soon as they become brown, they start to fail? You know, it's it's something that has to be asked, and it, I, I think it's something that the data supports. The The San Fernando Valley is a very interesting case study because the, from, from west to east, we can see it, it's, it's tangible. You cross the 405, it's a goddamn different place. And I think there's just questions that have to be asked and there's some there's some policies that have to be explored truthfully and and I think I think there is a lot of power to be found in looking back at history because there's 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 some knowledge to be gained and I think we have to be reminded of our roots in order to be able to, to grow past any obstacles or any complacency that we have to be like, you know, stuck in. We have, we're like in this stagnation period. And I think, you know, of course, Panorama City is starting to change now. There is a, a lot of new developments being planned and, and starting to be built. And that's going to be a whole separate video that I'm going to make. That's probably going to be part of my housing video. But you know, there's, you know, I, the consumerism, racism, housing, like these are all things that I think correlate in a, in an interesting way is particularly when it pertains to Panorama City and, and I'm looking forward to diving deeper into it. But for, yeah, for now, you know, this was just a quick video to really inform more or less about just, you know, how, how racism played a part in the formation and in the first 40 years of Panorama City and how uh, once the demographic changed, the city changed as well and arguably not for the best. Thanks for watching.